Okay, good evening, dear women. I know it's very cold today, so let's first of all ask that Mashiach will come with Zot Hashem. Let's bless. Amen. Amen. Welcome. I would like to tell you, we are going to start with a blessing after eating the, the meal, Be'ezrat Hashem, and we are going to speak today about a few things. We are going to study Halachot. Welcome. Uh, hi. Come and sit down. Uh, so we are going to ask, I'm so happy that you came. I, I would like to ask, I would like to ask all of you next time, please try to come at 9 o'clock. Okay? Try to be at, at, uh, on time. <laughs> try, try, make an effort. Try. I would like to tell you, we have a few things. To the, first of all, this week's parasha is the last portion of the week of Chumash, of Chumash Bereshit. We are finishing Chumash Bereshit, and you know and read that in the shul, that everybody stands and say, Chazak, Chazak, Benit, Chazek, this Shabbat B'Sha'a Tova. But you know what is going to happen this Shabbat on Friday, Erev Shabbat, there's going to be a fast. Yud Betevet. Please pay attention. Yud Betevet, we're going to speak about the halachot of the fast. Yud Betevet, dear women. Yud Tevet, which means it's the tenth of Tevet. It's the tenth day of the month of Tevet, and this is a fast. Dear women, there are our righteous rabbis, our sages, cause, made a few fasts, and the fasts are according to what happened in Jerusalem to the temple. The tenth of Tevet is the time that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel, went into the land of Israel and went to Jerusalem and seized Jerusalem. It means he put all of his soldiers around Jerusalem Welcome. He put all of his soldiers around Jerusalem and they could not bring food in. They could not do, do anything, but they did not break the walls. So the siege around the, the walls of Jerusalem started on the 10th of Tevet. It says like this in the, in the prophets. Vayi bashana tshi'it lemalcho bechodesh asiri. It says on the 10th, exactly the date. It says on, on the 10th month. And you know the first month by the Torah is Nisan. So we have Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elul. And then Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tevet. 10th month, for when we come from Nisan, is the month of Tevet. It says on the 10th month. And on the 10th of that month, it says, Basor Lachodesh, Ba Nebuchadnezzar Melech Babel, it says, Nebuchadnezzar Melech, the king of Babel, came, him, who, Bechol Chelo al Yerushalayim, him and all of his soldiers to Jerusalem. And why, why could he come to Jerusalem? Because of our sins. And then it says, Vayechan Alei, Vayevnu Alei Adik Misaviv, Daik Misaviv, which means they built, they surrounded the walls of the city. And you know, those days, it was a siege on the city. Uh, so they put the soldiers over there. They were waiting to see what will happen with the people inside the city, because then they won't have water, won't have uh, bread to eat. You know, it came to a stage that they didn't have bread to eat. And women used, uh, took their children and ate their children. They, they cooked their children. At oh, yeah. the siege was so bad. And the the hunger, ma? Huh? Yes. At the hunger was so bad. It was so severe that they, the, the, the women lost their minds. No money. They could no, even if they were rich, you couldn't buy anything with the money because all of the walls of the city were surrounded. Yes. So uh, listen very carefully. Which means until the twelfth, the the twelfth year of the kingdom of Tzidkiyahu, and then on the ninth of Batishal Achodesh veChazek Arab Bayir veLo Yalechem Laam Aretz. And then it says it was so severe. It the hunger grew worse and worse until on the seventeenth. It says on the seventeenth. Of the month of Tammuz, the walls were broken by the king, by King Nebuchadnezzar. 
It says, truly it says, in, you'll, find, you'll find that the sages say that the walls of Jerusalem, the first temple, were broken not on the Yudzayim Bet Amuz, but on the ninth Bet Amuz. But then Talmud Yerushalmi says, the Yerushalmi Talmud says that it was a mistake because they, they were so mixed up with the day that it was also on the 17th of Tammuz, the walls of the city of Jerusalem were broke. And then three... Ken, kol akachomot naflu. Ma shemert kama shisha chodashim haya matzor. Shisha chodashim. I'm going to tell you the words. So it says, and then after three weeks, after the walls of the city were broken, they went into the city on ninth of Av. They burned the temple. So tisha beAv, ninth of Av. And now I would like to speak today, we are on Yud Betavet. And then we have another, another Tanit, we have the other Tanit of Gimel Tishrei, which is Tzom Gdaliyahu. That the king of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, took Gdaliyahu and he put him on the, the people of Judea that was still under his, under his control. And then came one of the Jewish people and killed him. And because of that, there's the fast of Gimel Betishrei, it's on Gdaliyahu, it's on his name. But this Friday, it's Tzom, it's the fast of the 10th of Tevet. And you will ask me, how come there's a fast on Friday? Well, it's, it's Friday. And the fast starts at 5.50 a.m. in the morning until 5... Just a minute. After Shabbat comes in. Until 5... Oh, five. Which means we go out of the fast, uh, in the Kiddush already. Yes, yes, exactly, in the Kiddush. Now I would like to give you halachot regarding the fast. It's very important. What's the difference between Ta'anit and Som? What's the difference between Ta'anit, Ta'anit, and Som? When we say Ta'anit in, in the Hebrew language, we mean that this is a fast from the morning till night. Not a 24 hours fast. We have two fasts for 24 hours. One of them is Yom Kippur and the other one is uh, Tish Abav, the ninth of Av. Two fasts. But all the others are only Ta'aniyot, which means it's, they start from the morning until night. You'll see that there are righteous people that every Monday and Thursday also fast. When the book of the Torah is open in the shul, they fast, they are, yes, Monday and, and Thursday, they fast in order to ask Hashem to forgive the children of Israel for their sins. So you'll see that there are people, very righteous people, who do that during the year they fast. On Monday and Thursday, every week, Ken, Mamash, every week, they fast. I would like to tell you that it says like this, uh, when we have the Tanit, our sages, when they decided of, of those fasts, it was in order that we will remember the sins of our forefathers. And we will remember that their sins are the same like ours today. And the meaning of the fast is not that we will fast and continue to do everything that we do usually, but we will think and will ask forgiveness from Hashem and to forgive us and all of the children of Israel in order that, God forbid, there won't be another thing like this again. So this is the meaning of the fast. This is the essence of the fast. In order that we repent, we'll do tshuva. That's the essence of the fast. So it reminds us what our forefathers did, but then it's not different from what we are doing today. It's not different at all from what we are doing today. So they wanted us to remember in order that maybe this will cause us to do tshuva bezrat Hashem. Amen ken And it says like this, if the fast, im chalut haniyot elu beshabbat, dochinatam. If the fast falls on Shabbat, then we have to postpone it. But if the fast uh, falls on Erev Shabbat, on the eve of Shabbat, which means on Friday, mit aninu mashlimim, you have to do all of the fast on Friday. And then even a, a bride and groom, if this is the seven days that they, have, you know, the seven days that they Shabbat. celebrate after Ken Sheva Brachot, the seven days, even if they are in the seven days, and the fast is in the seven days, they have to fast too. Because, they have to have, it says, 
It says that they have, it says, אם לא יעלה לירושלים על ראש שמחתי, I will have to remember Jerusalem if I fail to elevate Jerusalem above my foremost joy. It means that even a bride and a broom have to fast on, on those fasts. Do you understand? Now, I would like to tell you this fast that we have, that is not 24 hours, not like Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av and the 9th of Av. So you'll ask me, but it's Friday and we cook for Shabbat. And we have to prepare for Shabbat. So do we, do we wash ourselves? Because you remember that usually in fast we do not wash ourselves. We do not, we do not put uh, oil on our body after that. So there are li- limitations. We do not wear shoes that from leather. But on those fasts that are not a full day, it's written over here in Shulchan Aruch, Shalosh Taniyot Arishonot Mutarot Berechitza Vesika Unilat Asandan Vafilu Tashmish Amita. Which means that you are allowed... To wash yourself, you are allowed to put even oil on your body, and you are allowed to wear shoes even from leather. Okay, then, yes. What's the reason on the 24-hour fast you're not allowed to wear leather? Because this is from animal, and if you took it from animal, you caused sorrow for an animal. You know, we are not allowed by Shulchan Aruch. We are not allowed lesares to cause animals not to bring other animals, not to get to get uh, pregnant. And you'll see people do that, but in our Torah, we are not allowed to do that. Not to dogs, not to cats, we are not allowed by the Torah. By Shulchan Aruch, this is the oral Torah. But you'll see, I'll, I'll teach you, we are not allowed to do that, because this is called Tsar Ba'alei Chaim, this is causing sorrow to the animals that God created. And they came over here also, to, to continue the generations further. So we are not allowed to do that. Even if we like a small dog at home or a cat, we are not allowed, we are not allowed to take their ability of getting pregnant or... Yes. Are there some people that don't wear leather at all? I mean, you know, not that I know of. Okay. Not that I know. Those days. Those days, yes, especially because then we repent to Hashem. So we have to be clean, even with the clothes that we put on ourselves. So usually, put white clothes, and we put sack. We put, you know, you know what a sack is? Sack clothes. It's like a sack that is open over here and in the hands to put it in order to ask repentance from from God. So it's part of it. And then it says, it says like this, which means on, the, on these fasts that are not 24 hours, it says, It says like this, that women that are nursing or are pregnant uh, are ex- uh, exempt from fasting if it causes them discomfort. Do you understand? Those women ca- can allow themselves not to fast on those fasts. They should, they should try. They should try, but if they see that it makes them uh, sick. Uh, yes, sick or they don't feel comfortable with it, they are allowed not to fast. It's Shulchan Aruch. It says, You know, to wash your mouth with water when you wake up in the you are not allowed also in those fasts. Okay, not only on Yom Kippur and Tisha B'Av, you are not allowed. It says, it says over, also over here, God forbid if we have a problem in the land of Israel or in, with the children of Israel, or it's an individual <coughs> problem, a personal problem, then we are, we are supposed to fast, to do a ta'anit, even if it's, it's not for 24 hours, only from the morning till night, in order to ask Hashem to help us. And if, God forbid, we are fleeing, we have a problem, we cannot fast, we need our strength, then we can say that Bezrat Hashem Blineder, we are going to fast when God saves us. So this mitzvah protects us. It's like we are, we are accepting a mitzvah upon ourselves, and God, Bezat Hashem, will protect us with His mitzvah because it, it protects us. It's like an angel that surrounds us because of the mitzvah that we said that, that we are going to do. And then, Bezat Hashem, I told you once that if you have a problem and you, you tell Hashem, I'm going to take upon myself a mitzvah, it, even if it's a kisui rosh, to cover your head, or it's a mitzvah that I'm going to, write, to read every day to heal him from chapter this to chapter that. Or I'm going to do a, another, a, I'm going to do netilat yadayim. I'm going to see that every time I'm going to do netilat yadayim. 
then God helps us with the mitzvah that we take upon ourselves. And then, Bezat Hashem, when God helps us solve the problem, we have to do a sudat mitzvah, a meal of mitzvah, and invite people, and then in front of them say thank you to Hashem. And we invite them and we say the phrase of Hashem in front of them. It's a big mitzvah. And the big thing is to say nishmat kol chai in, that, in this meal, the sudat mitzvah. It's a big thing, dear ladies. So this is also part of it. Okay. Yes, they are allowed not to fast. Yes, they are allowed. It says it's they are allowed if they are sick, pregnant, or nursing. A, no, 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 not, not pregnant or nursing. If they are sick, nursing or pregnant women, three things Shulchan Aruch says. The oral Torah says in those, not in the twenty-four hours. In those taniyot, in those fasting that are from the morning till night, they are allowed not to fast. What if a person is healthy but getting sick because of the fasting? So let him fast until he can, okay. before he feels that he feels sick. Okay, so he shows Hashem that he makes the effort, and he should ask Hashem from strength that he continue, can continue the old fast. Dear women, I would like to, uh, to remind you something. I, I saw women put their hands one in... You are not allowed to do that. Like this. Like this. You are not allowed to put... Yes, it's not good. I saw you doing this. This is something else, but you're not allowed to put the fingers one in. Why? No, I'll tell I'll told it already. I, I don't know if I said in this, maybe in a different lesson. I would like to explain for a minute. Please pay attention. Why it's not allowed? Because this, our right side of the body is kindness, and our left side is judgment. When we cross them together, the fingers, the Kabbalah says, the Zohar Kadosh says, it means that we agree with the judgment. Do you understand? And this we do not want for ourselves. You do not cross your fingers together. Okay, don't put them one inside yeah, another. Like you, do you put it like this? Like, like this, no. Like this. No, like this. So please pay attention. Even if you're cold, don't do that. The feet, uh, you know, it's, it's a derech eretz. Feet is also de the legs are also derech eretz. A woman that sits in derech eretz sits like this. You understand? Yeah, that's a derech eretz. Straight back. This is called uh, this is called derech eretz. Like Bat Melech, like a daughter of a king. The way we handle ourselves, that's the way we show that we appreciate the shem and we know that we are daughters of the same. It's legs too. We can do it like this. That's okay, but... Uh, yeah, when we see, you know, girls usually see... I know, but you know, you know I know... It's like, it's like, it goes like after my... I, well, it's also like the fingers, everybody is... Just, yeah, yeah. No, I never do like... You, I, you I, use it all the time. No, it's better that the legs are straight, not crossed, no. Okay, dear women, let's start. Yes. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, the difference between Ta'anit and Som, I will, I will say that again. When we say Ta'anit, it means that we are fasting from morning till night. When we say Som, no, it's also Ta'anit. Ma'boker adalayla. Tzom daliyahu is also tanit. It's from the morning till night. Only two two fasts are 24 hours. One of them is Yom Kippur, and the other one is the ninth of Av. Two fasts. All the others are only from morning. This is called tanit in Hebrew. I don't know how to translate it in English. It's called Tzom Gedalia, but it's a true, it's a tanit. Yes. It's only from morning till night. It's not 24 hours. Okay, so, and also you'll know, also the firstborns also have Ta'anit. You remember before Pesach, exactly, before Pesach the firstborns also have a Ta'anit. It's from morning till now. I don't know how to translate that in English because it's called a fast in English, both of them. But we call it in Hebrew when you hear Ta'anit, it means from morning till night. And when we, you hear Tzom, Tzom is 24 hours. Okay? Okay, so now I'm going to start...
We are, we are going to go. Did you bring your booklets with you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Yishar Kwa. I told you, Blin Eder, when we are going to finish all Birkot Anenim. You have it for me? I have, but today I will just uh, touch the, the beginning of it because we're going to continue next week. I hope everybody will be, so we'll have schut for everyone. When we finish everything, we are going, Bezrat Hashem, to celebrate together, maybe with the women in Brooklyn too. We're going to join all of us and have a celebration that we finish a, a, a big part of Shulchan Aruch from the morning when we wake up until the end of Birkot HaNeinim. We're going to speak about a lot of, of things, Bezat Hashem. I would like to tell you, dear women, it's written, the English one, you have the English one? Uh, the blessing after the meal. The, so, uh, tell me the page, just. Yeah, just finished. Okay, in the Hebrew booklet, it's on page 11. The blessing after the meal. <coughs> after the meal. Fifteen in English, eleven in Hebrew. Fifteen in English, eleven in Hebrew. Welcome. Yishar Koach. It's better late than not, than not coming at all. Yes, Yishar Koach. I know it's cold, I know. <laughs> it's also cold here. But now we're going, we are warming our hearts with the Divrei Hashem, with, the, ne- with the, the things that we're going to study about HaKadosh uh, Baruch Hu. Okay, dear women, let's start. I would like to remind you that last time we finished with all of the blessings over the food. So I told you, I'm going to summarize it in two sentences. You have to remember two things, then you remember everything. You'll remember what... What comes before? What kind of blessing comes before? If you remember two things, then you know the halakha. The two things are, I'll find that, are those. First, it's the verse from Chumash Dvarim, Chumash Dvarim, chapter 8, verse 8. This verse, Be'achal, no, this verse, Eretz chita u'seorah ve'gefen ve'teena ve'rimon Eretz zayit, zayit shemen u'dvash. If you remember this verse, you will, this is the seven species that the, the land of Israel is blessed with. You remember that chita is wheat. This is the land that is blessed with wheat. Sora is barley. Gefen is grape. Tena is figs. Rimon is pomegranate. And then Eretz Zayit Shem, which means olive oil. Bedvash, the dvash of tmarim. Tmarim is dates. Okay, the honey of dates. Those are the seven species that the land of Israel is blessed. It's from Chumash Dvarim, chapter 8, verse 8. So over here, you remember we spoke about the, all of them, what comes first in the blessing. Now, in order to remember that, we have to remember this verse, because it's very important, and this, this two words, Maga Esh, uh, the touch of fire. I told you the touch of fire means Mem, stands for... Motsi and Mezonot, which means, first of all, if we see on the table a Motsi, we, we do Netilat Yadayim, we bless over the bread. That, this comes first. Then if we don't have a Motsi, but we have Mezonot, Mezonot, the blessing of Mezonot comes first. Then the Gimel from Magaesh, if you just remember those two sentences, you remember everything. The Gimel is Gefen, blessing over the wine. Okay? Gefen. Ayn is Bore Priya Etz. This is, then comes Aetz. And then Esh, fire. Aleph is Adama. And Shin is Sheakol. So look how beautiful it is. First, if you have on the table, over here also, we have a mot, we have Mezonot. First, we say Mezonot. Then, we, if we have Etz, we say Etz before we say Priya Adama. Priya Adama is over vegetables, okay? Growing things that come from the earth. And then the last thing is shakol. When we drink something, or we eat chocolate, or cheese, a, um, an egg, everything, or meat. This is shakol, exactly. This is shakol. This is the last one. This is by order. If you remember these words, just remember, maga esh. You remember. You remember this sentence by heart. You know everything. Everything that we did before, you will know it. You just go through it. You'll see it's very easy. Just... Try to memorize it. You'll see it's very easy. Then, Bezrat Hashem, when you'll do that, you'll practice it. After a few times, you can teach others. You will see that you can teach others this. 
כן, זה המוציא, זה המם, בשביל לזכור את זה, זה מגע אש, בסדר? This you, all helps you to remember everything by order. Okay, now that we've finished all of this section, we'll go to the, and now we are blessing, the blessing after the meal. So it says, ואכלת, we have it in the, in the booklet, you'll see there. It's also from Chumash Dvarim. It's in, on chapter 8 and verse 10. It says, ואכלת וסבת, so it says by the Torah, the written Torah, God says you're going to eat, you're going to be full, you're going to be satisfied, sated, I think that's the... Sated. Sated. You're going to be sated and then you're going to bless. This is from Hashem. This is a commandment from Hashem. After you ate and you feel full and you feel happy with the food, then you're going to bless Hashem. Thank you for everything you gave us. So this is, and how do we bless Him? So look how beautiful it says. Veshev et. So they separated the sages. Veshev et. Which means you're going to sit down. Shev in Hebrew is sit down. Et is while. You are blessing. Beberachta is blessing. Look how beautiful it is. They separate the sabata. Sabata means that you are sated. So it says this word, we can separate it in Hebrew to two words. Veshev et. Look how beautiful it is. It means you have to sit down while you are blessing. You have to sit down on a chair and bless. That's why I tell you every time that we do the bracha chona, to sit down and listen to the blessing to, that someone says and say amen. So you'll be part of it and then he can see you from, from this mitzvah. Ve'achalta ve'savata. Ve'shev et u'verachta. It's beautiful. I would like to tell you, dear women, it says like this. If, uh, From all the papers, I have to find myself here. <laughs> it says like this in, in Masechet Brachot. It says in Masechet Brachot, uh, page 35, it says, He who enjoys this world, without a blessing, listen very carefully, He's a friend of Yerovam ben Evat, It means this Yerovam ben Evat, caused the children of Israel to not believe in Hashem. So uh, it's very weird. This says Masechet Brachot. Here, I'll write it over here. I can wipe over here the board. Okay. So if you have uh, some fruit, but then you decide you want to have mezzanine, <laughs> Okay, if you didn't think from the beginning to eat the mezonot, then you have to bless the mezonot after. Right. Okay, if you so didn't have the intention. Right. Okay. 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 Dear, water. dear women, listen very carefully. I'm writing it here. Kol anehene. Kol anehene. I think this is not good. Mina olam I would like to show you how it's connected to this parasha. I will explain a few things. It's very hard words. Et Israel, Lavinu Shabashamayim. Very harsh words. He destroyed the loyalty of the children of Israel to God. So he who doesn't bless over the food, that's what it says in the Gemara. That he's considered just like Yorovam ben Evat. Like he's a friend of Yorovam ben Evat. You know how serious it is? I will explain everything. I wrote it down so you'll see it. It's very serious. So you'll understand why it's very important to remember those two sentences, to bless Bezrat Hashem, to try and do it, practice, practice it, okay? And don't forget uh, we, uh, the beginning of the booklet that we said about Netilat Yedayim in the morning because we are the wives and women that make food at home. If we do not do that, if we do not do Netilat Yedayim of the morning, then the Ruach Ra, the bad spirit that is in between our fingers, everything that we oh, yeah. do has it. 
all the food, everything that we do to all of our friends, our, our children, our husbands, everything has it. So we, we shouldn't do that. We should remind ourselves to do Natilat Yadayim in the It's very important, one of the most important things to do the Natilat Yadayim in the morning. Dear women, I just reminded you that. Okay, so let's continue. I, now um, we are on the last parasha, the pos, last portion of the week of Chumash Bereshit, of the first Chumash. And what is the last one? It's called Vayechi. Vayechi means, and he lives. And you know that Yaakov dies in this parasha. So we know that Tzadikim bemotam chayim, which means Tzadikim, righteous people in their death, they're alive. And you know, Reshaim bechayem etim. Reshaim is a call that in their life they are dead. Why are they dead? Because most of the parts of the soul are not with them. They are already, they are not with them. That's why they are called dead. They, can, they, they are poor people. They cannot see the truth anymore. Because they are soldiers of the Sitrachah. They cannot see anymore. They, saw, they see only the light, the physical world in this, in this world. They cannot see anything above it, beyond it. They have limitations. Of the, of the lies that they see in front of them. Yeah, that's a big problem. That's a, the miskinim. So it says, dear women, in this parasha, we can see that Yaakov and his children go to Egypt. And we can see that Yaakov over here, before he dies, the Derech Agav, Yaakov is the first person in the world that is sick. Yeah. Yeah. The After first time, uh, you remember I told you, people used to die by sneezing. Once they sneezed, they died. Wow. So Yaakov Avinu told Hashem, he told Hashem, God, but if I will sneeze and die, then I can't live a will to my children. I do not know on what day I'm going to die. You remember the King David asked Hashem, on what day am I going to die? Okay, toda. Uh, well, it says that Yaakov Avinu, uh, the King David, sorry, asked Hashem on what day I'm going to, tell me please when am I going to die? God said I cannot reveal this, the date when you're going to die. I can tell you the day, but I cannot reveal the date. So you remember he told him it's Saturday. Every time King David, it was after Saturday, after Mosei Shabbat, at the end of Shabbat, King David used to celebrate. That's why we do Melaveh Malka. Melaveh Malka we do because of King David. Because he used to celebrate Melaveh Malka. He used to escort the queen. The queen is Shabbat because he had another day. He was living another week. He had life another week. Every Shabbat. That's why we do the fourth meal. The fourth meal is the Melaveh Malka, the David Malka Meshicha. That's what we do. We do the fourth meal. It's very important. Why? Because it's Mashiach ben David. And the, you know what bone uh, celebrates and has enjoyment from this uh, meal? The, the fourth meal of Shabbat. You know what bone? Yes. Only this. It's called the bone of, the bone of Luz. That's the bone from which God, Bezrat Hashem, is going to do Tchiyat HaMetim. From this bone, He's going to recreate all the human being again. From this bone that is in the grave, because nothing happens to this bone. So let's go back to Yaakov Avinu. So Yaakov Avinu says to Hashem, how can I leave? I have 12 sons, and I would like to leave everything in order while after I, I die, after I pass away. Sorry? So he, no, but usually you see that the righteous people bless their children before they die. All of the righteous people, just before they die, they bless their children. Do you want me to explain? Yes. Okay, so let's concentrate. So Yaakov Avinu asks sickness. So God says, Chayecha, it says in the Midrash. Chayecha, which means Lashon Shbua, he promises him, you're going to be the first person to be sick. It's like Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu, the, before Abraham Avinu, there was no old people. There wasn't something like that. But, and Abraham Avinu said, God, look, Yitzhak, my son, looks exactly like me. Exactly. Everybody thinks he's Abraham. God, there has to be a difference. So God says, Chayek, you're going to be the first old person in the world. So he was the first, Abraham Zaken, Baba Yamim. He was the first old person in the world. So Yaakov Avinu was the first sick person in the world. And they come to Yosef and, he says, and they tell him, your father is sick. But everybody was, uh, you know, raising their eyebrow because 
What is sickness? They never saw that before. They, used to, they, only, they knew that if they sneeze, that's the end. So we see that he's uh, sick. And then we see that he calls Yosef, and Yosef brings his son. And look how beautiful it is. It says like this. The Torah says he brings his sons because it's connected to this. I would like to explain. You will see. It's beautiful. And he comes over here and he tells them, he brings the sons. And Israel kabdumi zoken, it says. And the eyes of Yaakov were, you know, he couldn't see very well. And just a minute, I have to find the pasuk. Oh, here. Vayar Israel edne Yosef vayomer mi ele. So Israel is Yaakov, you know, it's the second name of Yaakov, mm-hmm. the higher spiritual name. And he looks at the sons of uh, Yosef and he says, who are these? Mm-hmm. Now Yosef brought them in and he says, who are these? Isn't that weird that he will ask him, who are these? Outside? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, God forbid. Who are these? And it's very weird. And listen to what Yosef tells him. Vayomer Yosef al Aviv, Banai hem asher natan li elokim bazeh. Vayomar kachem na elai vavarchem. So Yosef says, and Yosef said to his father, They are my sons whom God has given me here. Whom? The word whom is bazeh. So here we have something. Banai asher natan li elokim bazeh. So the, uh, it says that this is a very uh, beautiful hint. In all Torah it says, Rabbi Pinchas ben Zcharia Kohen Zchutot Agen Elenu says about it something beautiful. You know how many children Yosef should have had? His brother had ten children. Benjamin had ten sons. So how many sons did Yosef supposed to have? Twelve. Twelve. How do we know that? Because of the ten. Of the ten. Excellent. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Excellent. I would like to tell you he was supposed to have you bet. How do we know that from Bazet? He had two. Bet is two in numerical value. Zion is seven and Hay is five. Seven plus five is twelve. He says, I have two out of twelve that I was supposed to have. That's the word whom. He tells his father, I was supposed to have twelve, but I have only two. Why? Because ten drops of seed of sperm fell from him because of the wife of Petifera. Mm-hmm. So he was supposed to have, but he had only two. You know how many sons were, were supposed to, uh, Yaakov, Avinu, uh, Yaakov Avinu was supposed to have? No, how many true sons he was supposed to have? Chamesh 15. Shiftaya. We say Shiftaya. Shiftaya. Yud Kuf, instead of the hey, Yud is 10. Kuf, this is a hey, it's five, together is 15. And you'll ask me, how come 15? How come 15? And he has only 12. You remember that Ruven took the bed from the tent of Bilha, so she won't be with Yaakov? You remember that? And why he did that? He, he was jealous for his mother. And on that night, God sent two souls, twins, twin sons, Send in order that she will get pregnant with two sons. And because she wasn't with Yaakov, she did not get pregnant with twins. Who got those souls? Yosef got those souls. Their names were Ephraim and Menashe. Ephraim, Ephraim, and Menashe. Look, it's not, it's only the beginning. Just follow with me and you'll understand. It's a, so look what he says. So he says, Ephraim and Menashe shall be mine like Reuven and Shimon. He knows, Yaakov, those were supposed to be his sons. He sees the souls and he says, those are supposed to be my sons. And they are going to be just like my sons, Reuven Reuven and Shimon. He says that. They were going to be just like my sons. Why? Because before the souls come to this world, there's a special heichal. A special place in heaven that it's the last stop, you know, like a bus stop. It's the last stop in heaven before they come to this world. This stop is called goof. It's called goof in Hebrew. Body in English. It's called goof. It's written in all of the holy books. Mataya Gia Mashiach ben David. When does Mashiach come to this world? Kashari Kalua Neshamot Min Haguf. When all of the souls that are standing and waiting in this goof, in this place that is called goof, body, all of the souls, before they come to this world, 
uh, came to this world and there's no souls there anymore, this is the time Mashiach comes. How do we help Mashiach come? When we get married and we get pregnant and bring souls, Jewish souls to this world, then we are helping to take the souls from this place that is called Guf to this world, exactly, until it's empty of souls. So we have to bring as much children as God wants us to bring in this world. That's why we came to this world, to help Mashiach come. How do we do that? So, no, we have to bring the children that God blessed us with. There's a number for each one of us. It goes not to the goof, it goes to a judgment place already, to a court. I'm talking about the souls that are waiting to come to this world. That's the last stop in heaven before they come to this physical world. They have the process also, the judgment, and then from the judgment goes in a good place. Uh, uh, no, 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 it depends. No. It depends. If they are righteous, they go to heaven, they go to get straight to Gan Eden, to paradise. If they were very wicked, they have to go to hell. Before they go to hell, and then they have uh, four coronations. Uh, they can be coronated in a plant. This is not the goof. The goof is where the souls are waiting over here. This is after, this is after everything. They are waiting to come back into, into this world. This is the last stop. And how do we help? By getting pregnant and bringing children to this world. Getting married and bringing children as much as God wanted us to bring. These children uh, that uh, he's supposed to have it from Bilha, yes? Not from the Rachel. No, from Bilha. He was supposed to have two uh, twins, two sons. So you'll tell me now it's 14 children. So where is the 50th? Right. Shiftaya, it's written Shiftaya. So where is the 15th one? You remember that Dina, she had, you remember that Leah had Dina, a girl? But you remember what I told you? It was supposed to be a son. But she prayed to Hashem and she called Bilhah and Zilpah, the other two mothers. She called them and she said, listen, Rachel does not have children. And it will be a shame if she at least two ch children will have from the 12 tribes. So she prayed to Hashem that it would, won't be a boy, but it, will be a girl. it was supposed to be a boy. So this is the 15 boys that Yaakov Avinu was supposed to have. So look how beautiful it is. So those souls became his grandchildren, but he considered, he puts them with the tribes, like it's part of the, of the tribes of the children of Israel. Look, Ken, We don't have Yosef in, in, in the 12 tribes. We have Ephraim and Menasheh. You look at all of the tra 12 tribes, we don't have the name Yosef. We have Ephraim and Menashe. Yeah. Those are representatives of Yosef. Look how beautiful it is. But it yeah. says, Asnaf, yes. Asnaf, 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 Asnaf is from, the, from Dina, right? Who? Osnat, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's why Osnat married Yosef, because it was supposed to come. Those children were supposed to come to them. So look how beautiful it is. Now I'm telling you, Is Israel Saba. Which means Yaakov Avinu sees the children and he asks, Miele, why does he ask him, who are the, those, who are these? How come he asks that? So look how beautiful it is. He sees over there that the wicked people are supposed, that souls of wicked people that are supposed to come out of them. And who are they? From Ephraim. Uh, okay, you'll see over here. From Ephraim was supposed to be Yerobam ben Nevat. You see, this is Yerobam ben Nevat. He comes from the tribe of Ephraim. Over here, he who enjoys this world without a blessing is a friend to Yerobam ben Nevat. That it's, it says she is Shechit, that made the children of Israel. Uh, they, he destroyed the children, the loyalty of the children of Israel to the, the Father in heaven. So this person, Yerobam ben Nebat, comes from the tribe of Ephraim. And another man that comes from the tribe of Ephraim is Achab. So how you explain Ahab, that? Ahab, I'll explain everything. Let me, Ephraim we'll do it. So I will explain everything, everything. Look over here, Menashe, from him came Yehu Banav. Yehu. Bebanab and his sons. All of them are kings, but kings of Israel. You remember after King Solomon passed away, the kingdom of Israel was separated into two. It was into two. One of the, the, the kingdom of Judea and the other one is the kingdom of Israel. Ten tribes were, were the kingdom of Israel 
and the kingdom of Judea cont uh, contained two tribes, Judea and Benjamin, Benjamin, both of them, okay? Two. Those are the rulers of the kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes. Why was it separated on the day that they celebrated? The first temple, Mushlomo, married the daughter of Pao. So then the, the kingdom was separated into two, was split into two. And it says, after Shlomo Melech, Rechavam ben Shlomo, Rechavam was the son of Shlomo, he ruled over Judah and Binyamin, the two tribes. And the one that ruled over the ten tribes was the, from the tribe of Ephraim, Yorovam ben Nevat. And I told you that you had three times, three times, Three times during the year we have to go to Jerusalem, to the temple, to sacrifice, to sacrifice sacrifices, okay, to Jerusalem. On Shavuot, Pesach, and Sukkot, three times a year. So when they go over there, only the true king, that is the, the a son, one of the generations of the King David, he is allowed to sit by Echal in, in Bet HaMikdash, in the temple. He's the only one. And he can do Bayakhel. He can read from the Torah. But the others are not allowed. So Yorovam ben Nevat then knew that he's not part of the descendants of King Solomon and King David. He wasn't. He was from the tribe of Ephraim. He wasn't from the tribe of Judea, which was the tribe of kingdom. So he knew that when they all go to Jerusalem, they will see that he's not a true king. He is not allowed to sit there. So what did he do? He took the two golden cloths, like the golden cloth that they did in the desert. He made two golden cloths. One he put in Bet El and one in Dan. Two places he put, Bet El and Dan. And over there he told everybody to go over there and sacrifice sacrifices. And the ones that tried to go to Jerusalem, he killed them. He put soldiers over there all the way to Jerusalem so they cannot go. And the ones who tried, he killed them. So he made them worship another god. That's why it says that he who enjoys this world without a blessing is a friend of Yerobam ben Nevat. Because Yerobam ben Nevat, that did not know how to appreciate Hashem in this world, that's what a person who does not bless over the food does not know how to appreciate Hashem in this world. Because it's written, which means God, God, everything in this world and all his fullness belongs to him. But then it's written also in Tehillim, Hashemayim Shemayim Lashem, the heavens are for God, the Aretz Livne Adam, the Aretz Nantan Livne Adam, and the earth he gave, this land he gave to human beings. So it seems like it contradicts each other, but it doesn't, because it says, our sages say, the heavens are for Hashem, and the land is for the human beings only after they bless. After they ask permission from Hashem to use what He has in this world, what He gave us in this world. After we ask permission, we are not stealing. We know that he, we show everybody that we know His presence in this world, Hashem's presence in this world. Then we are allowed to eat. Otherwise, we are just like Yorovam ben Nevat that caused the children of Israel not to believe in Hashem. That's what he did. And Achav, Achav was also a king that was married to Izebel. She, was, she worshipped other gods, and he worshipped other gods with her. And Yehu, which comes from the tribe of Menashe, was also a king of, of, Israel, of Israel. He used to be a very fearful king. He used to be, uh, fear Hashem. But then what happened, he wanted to clean the land from all of the prophets of the other gods. You know, they worshipped other gods. So he called all the Nevi'ah Baal, all the prophets of the Baal that they worshipped, and he called them and he said, come, I would like to celebrate with you. And God says, Ve'brit kurutalas fatayim. It's very dangerous what we take out of our mouth. Brit, remember that, it's very important. Kurutalas fatayim. A treaty is with the lips. Whatever you take out of your lips, I told you there are angels, good and bad angels, that they'll say amen after what you say. That's why I told you, never curse yourself. God forbid your children or someone. Try to, to say good things. If you cannot say anything, close zip your mouth. Don't say anything. It's better because 
There are angels that sit there are surrounding us. We do not see that, but there are, it, there, it doesn't mean that the spiritual world is not here. It is. And they're all around us. And because of that, when we say something, they answer Amen. So God forbid when we take bad things, or especially when we say them about ourselves, it's like a prophet that we, fulfills itself. God forbid. It's like the children of Israel said, you remember that we are going to die in the desert? And that's what truly happened to them. Before they sinned, before they sinned with the Meraglim, with the spies, they truly, all of them died, passed away in the desert. Because this is Nevoa Shemakshimai Tatsma. When they asked for food and they said they don't have food, maybe they should go back to, to Egypt. So we, are, we, we have to pay attention to what we take out of our mouths. Because then it's called Brikutal Lasfataim. A treaty is with the lips, everything that we take out of our lips. So I would like to tell you, but what good things came out of the tribe of Ephraim and Menashe? And you have to know that, you know the blessing that we give our sons on Friday night? What do we say? That they will be like Ephraim and Menashe. We bless them like Ephraim and Menashe. And you know who was the older one? Menashe was the older one. Not Ephraim. First it was Menashe. So, and when Yaakov Avinu wanted to bless them, he made his hands like this. Yeah. The right hand was over Ephraim, and the left one over Menashe. He crossed his hands. Wow. Why? Because from Ephraim, there will be a big leader, and the leader is Yoshua Ben Nun. Yoshua Ben Nun is from the tribe. Yoshua Ben Nun is from the tribe. Of Ephraim, he is, the, he is the student, the scholar of Moshe Rabbeinu. He is the one that takes the children of Israel into the land of Israel and conquers the land of Israel with the children of Israel. A big schut. He, he, is, a, he is a big scholar of Moshe Rabbeinu. So Yeshua ben Nun was the first one God made that Ephraim, even though he was the youngest, he will be the first one. And from Menashe, there's also another person that is going to save the children of Israel. And his name was Gidon. It was from the book of Judges. And you know the book of Yoshua Binun. Yoshua is before the book of Judges. And then the book, in the book of Judges, we see that the children of Israel have a problem with the nations around them. And Gidon, which wasn't a prophet, and he wasn't a, a, a righteous, a, 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 him himself, a righteous person, a very righteous person, or a son of a righteous person, we see that he prays to Hashem. And with his words, like I said, Brit Kurtalas Fatayim, which means the treaty is with your lips, he says to Hashem, God, look how, what, what is the power of when we speak good about the children of Israel. It says, God, we heard about the miracles that you did to the children of Israel in Egypt. We heard how you took them out of Egypt. We heard that from our forefathers. And he says, and they were in 49 ga gates of impurity. So can you not help us? Can't you do the same thing for us? Show us what you did to them. So God sent an angel. He sent an angel to get on. And he said, with those words that you took out of your mouth, when you de defended the children of Israel with your words, with the treaty of your mouth, you're going to win the war. You're going to be the general, take soldiers, and I'm going to help you win the war. You're going to conquer all your enemies with the words that he said for the children of Israel. Look how beautiful it is. Only the words that he said. So that's why you see that we have a Ephraim and Menashe. And why do we bless the children, our children with their names? Because Ephraim and Menashe was so good, they were so good to each other. They were brothers that loved unconditionally each other. Menashe wasn't angry that Ephraim received first the blessings and the right hand was on him and not on him. He, didn't, he wasn't envy with his brother. That's why we bless that we want you to be just like them, that you will have so much love for each other, not, not jealousy. <laughs> so that, then you know when you have love, there's peace, there's prosperity, there's everything in your house. You need love and not jealousy. That's why we bless Ephraim and Menashe. And more than that, Yaakov Avinu blessed them that they will be like fish, that they will have a lot of children just like they do Larov. Why did they bless them like fish? Because fish are inside the water. You do not see them. So there's no even uh, evil eye on the fish. And they also multiply with nobody knowing exactly what's going on inside the water. 
So that's what, this is why we bless also our children, that nobody will have an, any evil eye on them. And they will multiply and they will be healthy and they will have everything and they will be also contain and, and preserve the Jewish tradition and the Jew, Jewish laws like they're supposed to be without anybody touching them. They can do that freely. So this is why we bless also our children on Friday night with a fire menashe. Yeah. Yehu, ah, and when I told you about Yehu, thank you. When I told you about Yehu, he, first of all, so we'll go back. What he said, he he, he gathered all. He told all of the, the prophets of uh, other of other gods. He called them. It's called Neviah Baal, the Ashra. He called them. He gathered them. He said, "You have to come, and I would like to celebrate with you." Once he called them, he killed all of them. But because he said that, and I told you an angel said, um, says a man of what he said, then in time he started to worship other gods. Because he was a, fear, a fearful person. He feared Hashem. <laughs> but then, can the Meshach Hazman, we tchil avod elokim acharim, ve'az gam abanim shelo acharav. So that's what happened. That's why I said it's very important. Brit kurutala sfatayim. It's very important what we take out of our mouth. So when we bless Hashem, when we eat, and then when we bless Hashem, the last blessing, the, the blessing after the meal, it's very important. It's part of the things that we have to do. I would like to tell you in this, in this parasha also, there's a, you remember that Rivka Imenu told Yaakov, when he, she told him, you have to leave the, our house, you have to go to my brother, before your, your, God forbid, your brother will kill you. What did she say then? So I won't, both of you will not die on the, on the same day. So it says when Yaakov Avinu passes away, he wants to be buried in the land of Israel. And he wants to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah. So in the cave of the Machpelah. So he tells Yosef, and Yosef promises him that he is going to do that. And they take his body to Israel. And while they're taking him to Israel, they're standing in front of Marat HaMachpelah in the cave. Esav comes, his brother Esav comes with a lot of soldiers. And he says, no, he cannot be buried over there. He says, you cannot bury him over there because this is my place of burial, not his. I gave him the Bchora, the firstborn rites, but I did not give him the right to be buried in Marat HaMachpelah. So the sons of Yaakov say, no, you signed a treaty with him. You remember that Yaakov, after his father passed away, he took all of the gold and silver that he had and he put it in front of Esav and he said, I would like to buy the place where I'm going to be buried. I'm going to be buried with my father. So they signed the treaty. So Esav says, well, show me the treaty. If I signed it, show me the treaty. So they said, but the treaty is in Egypt. So it's very fine. And our father can't, the body can't stay over here. And it's a chilul. So he says, he says, no, I won't go from here. You cannot bury him until you bring the treaty. So they sent Naftali, which was light as Tzvi, like a deer. He was very, he used to run very fast. So he sent him and he ran to Egypt to bring the treaty. Meanwhile, Dan had only one son. Dan, Shevet Dan. Dan had only one son. His name was Hushim. He's, he was Kvat Shmiya. He did not yes. hear well. Yes, he did not hear well. So it says that he did not understand what's going on. He did not hear what happened with Esav. He did not hear that. So he said, he asked them, what happened? Why is, our, uh, why is my grandfather not buried yet? So they said, Esav came. They explained to him. And he's not allowing us to put his body inside. Hushim got very angry. Some say, or some of the sages say, with his, with his fingernail, he took off the head of Esav. Oh some say with a sword he took off the head of Esav. The head rolled into the cave. It says that the head of, ya of Yaakov, Yaakov raised his head, he was smiling. He was dead then. But he raised his head, he was smiling. The prophecy of his mother, Rivka, came true that I won't, both of you will not die on the same day. They, they, on the same day. Mm -hmm. He's going to, bury, to be buried and the son's head was chopped off. Until today, until Mashiach comes, the head of a son is in Maharata Machpelah. And nobody can take it out. I will speak about it, Glineder. Uh, nobody, everybody tried to tell him to, that he, he, it's not his place to be there. So, 
When Yaakov Avinu told him it's not your place to be here, he said, I did kibbud Avem. I, I respected, I respect thy father and mother. I did it all the time. I, I sat in the land of Israel. Two big mitzvot I did. I didn't leave the land of Israel. But you did leave that. So it means that I, I deserve to be here. Every forefather that spoke with him, he had answer for each one of them. But Bezat Hashem, Sheyagia Mashiach. Sorry? Uh, it, it was out of the, they buried it in a different place. But his head rolled into the cave. Until Mashiach comes, the head is over there. Look how, uh, but, sorry? They all saw that the head was rolling in. Yeah, but when Mashiach comes. Then they will take the head out of there because that's a, the spiritual thing. They will. Then you have to have a, a, this. This is a conversation about all of the mitzvot that a person did. He says, "I'm here because of two mitzvot. I deserve that. I was in the land of Israel all this time. I did not leave the land of Israel. I'm also the son of Yitzchak." And I did, I did, I did kibud avem. I, it means respect thy father and mother. I did it. You did not do that for 22 years, right. he told Yaakov Avinu. Mm -hmm. So his head is still in there, but Bezat Hashem Shegeh Mashiach Tzitkenu, he won't be there anymore, Bezat Hashem. Bezat Hashem, how did he get out of it? But when he came, listen, what? No, 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 they couldn't. They cannot go inside it oh, totally. Yes, yes. You remember that Avraham Avinu wanted to bury Sarah, and yes. the first human being, Adam Arishon, the Chava, did not allow him to come near. Why? Because they were ashamed of their sins. Because they said, we did not have the evil spirit then, and we sinned. And everybody, and all because of our sin, there's death in this world. So because of... Yes, please. No, no, no. They, their sons, they were holy. It's not like us. They could bury him, but they couldn't go inside. This is a spiritual thing that they did. They couldn't go totally inside, but they, they buried him. And the head of Esav is there until today. Dear women, let's continue. I would like to tell you everything. This is what, only in the introduction for the blessing after the meal. We're going to, Bezrat Hashem, I hope next lesson everybody will be here. So we will do all of the halachot, all of the Jewish laws that are concerned with the blessing after the meal. We just gave an introduction. Every, we have to remember the sentence, Kol David Rachmana Letav Avid, Amen. Which means everything that God does, does only for the best. We have to remember that all of the sorrows with, that we have are only for our good. And Yaakov Avinu also had to learn that in the hard way, that all of the sorrow, that 22 years that Yosef wasn't with him, was only for good because eventually Yosef became a, a very big ruler, his right hand, the right hand of Paro. So he, and he helped all of the all of the nations around to have food. The Tomeret that everything that God did did for the best, and he also because of Yosef, the the sea was split for the children of Israel because Yosef came for twelve for twelve parts, and it was because of Yosef. That's why we have to remember that everything that God is does does only for the best. Call the Abid Rachman and the I would like to finish here today, and I would like to bless you. Shagia Mashiach to tell me, Mabe Amenu Amen. Eliyahu Nevi Eliyahu Tishvila Avud Mimrav Moshev Ben David Eliyahu Nevi Zachur Lato. Lola Mi Pared Adam Mi Chavarot Bidvar Alachai Yachid Barabim Alachai Kerabim. Yisharkach Moshe Mikor.